Hello everyone and welcome back to 27 Fox Place. Before we get started today, I just wanted to take a minute and share a few images from this amazing flower. And the flowers are about eight inches in size and their petals look like feathers. And the bloom is from a night blooming cactus and it only blooms a few times a year. And it only opens at night and it blooms for only one night and it starts to open at sunset and then it starts to close again as soon as the sun comes up and my grandmother had it when it was only a few inches tall and then she gave it to me when we moved into the house so it's at least 25 years old now and it just has the most beautiful flowers I've ever seen. I have a mess to clean up in the laundry room today, but I also have a few other things that I need to take care of first, but I need to get the clothes in the dryer so that they can dry while I clean up. But everything seems to crumble around you. My day typically starts with a coffee refill and I always need a few minutes to wake up in the morning so unless I'm running late I like to sit down with my first cup of coffee and by the time I finish that first cup I'm usually ready to get started and even if I'm not ready having to get up for that second cup gives me just a little bit of momentum to get started for the day. We have a great view of the hummingbird peters from this window and the hummingbirds are very active first thing in the morning so it's always a treat to watch them when I'm working in the kitchen. And a clean kitchen at night starts the day off right and an empty dishwasher keeps the dirty dishes out of sight. <laughs> so unloading the dishwasher is always a priority because it's just easier to keep the kitchen tidy between meals. I know that you feel all alone in there are a few ways to sanitize the kitchen sponge and I like to use the dishwasher to sanitize the sponge and the brushes that I use in the kitchen. But there are times when I need to use a sponge while the dishwasher is running. So soaking it in vinegar for five minutes or a minute or two in the microwave will also work. And it helps to rinse out the sponge and wring out the excess water after every use. And I need to change the sheets today so that I can get the bed made and washing the sheets every week is good for overall hygiene and gets rid of harmful germs and bacteria and the experts recommend changing the sheets every one to two weeks but I just love the smell and feel of fresh sheets so I change them every week. Snowflakes are coming down Collapse into water when they hit the ground I hear the sound of empty streets Yesterday is gone to sleep So all that's left is you and me I can promise you're the only thing I see Fade away Build a secret place For you and me 
And summer got off to a late start this year and we've been getting days in the 90s and even 80s and things didn't really heat up for us until July and the temperatures are typically hovering in the upper 90s and we'll get a few days in the triple digits here and there and when we get days that are that hot the overnight lows only get down into the 70s so we have central air to keep the house cool but when it's cool enough outside we open up the windows at night to cool things down but it's too hot to use the comforter this time of year so we just leave it folded at the foot of the bed because we just don't have enough room to store it and we have a down comforter that's dry clean only so now is the perfect time to take it in to get cleaned A few years ago we got a new washer and dryer and put in new cabinets and the first thing I did was organize everything and I'll be sure to add a link to the video in this description box if you want to see what that looks like and it's been an ongoing process and I've made a few minor changes here and there and things need to be easy to get to and easy to put away and having the space organized helps to keep track of what we have so we don't run out or waste money buying things we already have but I also spend a lot of time in this space so I've tried to make it look nice and for me the inside of the cabinets are an extension of this space so I want things to be neat and tidy when I open up the cabinets but I also want them to look nice on the inside too. It doesn't take very long for this area to turn into a complete disaster <laughs> and there's a few things that just need to be put away and the rest of it is just refills that I left out so that I could take care of it but this whole mess got started when I needed to refill the OxyClean and that started a chain reaction that led to making new labels for all of the canisters and new labels have been on my list for months and making labels is the easy part but deciding which design to use is usually what takes most of the time for me <laughs> and the more choices that I have the harder it is for me to make a decision and then I finally realized that not making a choice was the worst decision of all so I made a new set of labels for all of the canisters and now I just need to get everything put away and cleaned up. When I first organized the laundry room, I used a paint pen to label everything so that I could wash it off when I needed to make changes. And it's something that I use all over the house and I'll be sure to leave a link in the description box for that one. But once everything seemed to be working, then I switched to a more permanent label. And they did their job, but they were a little too plain and I'm just ready for something different. When the pandemic started, we overstocked on a few cleaning supplies like borax <laughs> and borax is a natural compound and it's very similar to OxyClean but it's more toxic and I use it mostly as a laundry booster and it's finally reached a point where it will fit in the smaller canister <laughs> and I made a bit of a mess when I was switching things around.
All of the bright colored packaging is too busy and distracting, so decanting is a way to create a neutral and uniform color palette, and decanting all of the laundry products into clear canisters makes it easier to see when we're getting low on supplies. So I use my Cricut Joy to make all the labels for the canisters, and because these canisters are sitting out on the countertop, I wanted something that would blend in but still be easy enough to read. And since all the laundry products look similar, white seem to be a good choice. I saw you down the motorway There was something about you that day Shimmering sound. The hill is near, let's get right up. Walk up to the very top. We couldn't tell the sky from the ground. I know my life will never be the same after that day. You wrap me around your fingers and you stay. I decided to switch from the Tide Pods to the Tide Powder because I just didn't notice enough of a difference to keep using them. And when I opened up the box, the powder was sticking together <laughs> and I had a hard time getting it out without making a huge mess. But only half the contents fit in the jar, so I had to reuse the empty bag for the OxyClean. And I filled up the empty bag with the rest of the detergent so that it's easier to store. I don't ever wanna be alone again Despite all, all you're my best friend Now that everything is cleaned up and put away, I can finally get to actual cleaning and I need to wipe down the cabinets and clean up the washer and dryer today. And I'm just using a damp microfiber cloth to wipe down all the fronts of the cabinets and to remove the dust and any spots that I find along the way. Just 
I still have clothes in the dryer that I need to fold and put away and normally I try to get that done as soon as possible before the wrinkles set in but this load is mostly socks and towels and I wanted to finish cleaning the washer and dryer so I just put all of the clothes in the laundry basket to get them out of the way. I know that. I try to wipe down the washer and dryer every week or two, but the tub in the washer needs to be cleaned about every 30 cycles, and the lint trap on the dryer needs to be cleaned out at about the same time. And I mentioned last week that I have a zone dedicated to the garage and laundry, and I have an eight week schedule, but I clean upstairs one month and downstairs the following month. So every few months I get an extra week to either catch up on cleaning or take a break from the cleaning. <laughs> so the timing for this project couldn't have worked out any better. the lint from the trap after every load and to keep the dryer running more efficiently I clean out the trap and the dryer vent every month or two. And now that everything is back in order, I can finally fold that load of laundry and get that put away. And it's so much nicer to fold the laundry when everything is cleaned up and put away. Close your eyes. Get some rest.
Cleaning up and organizing the laundry room was my big task for the day and I just have the laundry to put away and there's a few other things left to do in the kitchen before I'm done for the day. And once the laundry basket is empty, I can take the sheets down to the laundry room so that I can wash them tomorrow and I still need to drop off the comforter at the cleaners this week. few things that I moved out of the laundry room that needed to be put away in the kitchen but there were also a few more things that I needed to do and I wanted to stay focused and finish up in the laundry room so I left them out on the counter instead of putting them away. I keep the dishwasher pods in a pop-up container because it fits better inside the cabinet and it's just big enough to hold one package of pods and for some reason I thought it would hold more so I have a few weeks left before I can empty out the rest of the container. I typically only cook with cold pressed oils like avocado oil, coconut oil, and olive oils. And avocado oil has the most neutral flavor and a higher smoke point. And it's the one that I use the most when I'm cooking. So I keep a bottle of avocado oil next to the stove and I washed out the bottle. So I just need to refill it so that it's ready to go. I'm trying to come back to you because now I see we were meant to be. And the salt and pepper mills are almost empty, so I need to refill them. And I like to season with fresh cracked pepper when I'm cooking. And I like this set because I only need one hand to use them. And I went through several different types of salt and pepper mills before I found this set. And I tried several different gravity mill options and they grind from the top. And they work automatically when you turn them upside down. And they're nice because they don't make a mess on the counter. But every set that I tried broke when I tried to adjust them. And because I've had so many problems, I've been reluctant to share this set. But I've had them for almost a year now. And so far they're still working and I'm really happy with them. And the one drawback is that they're battery operated. But it's going on a year now and I still haven't had to change the batteries.
And now that everything's cleaned up and put away, I wanted to make a batch of chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> and I need to start by melting the coconut oil in the microwave for a few seconds. And this is a low carb, grain free, vegan option. And it's so easy to make and it hits the spot whenever I need something that's a little sweet. And I just combine all of the dry ingredients together in a mixing bowl. And then I add in the maple syrup, vanilla, and oil. There's only a few ingredients in this recipe so it comes together quickly and once all the ingredients are in the bowl, I just need to mix everything together. I'm using parchment paper for easy cleanup and I like to use a cookie scoop because it's fast and easy and all of the cookies come out the same size so they cook evenly. But this dough doesn't flatten out while it cooks so once all the dough is scooped onto the cookie sheet I can press them down just a little bit to flatten them out and they need to bake for about 8 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So while the cookies are in the oven, I should have just enough time to clean up and measure out a batch of bread mix. And I shared my bread recipe in my last meal prep video and I'll be sure to leave a link for that one in the description box and I just want to measure out the dry ingredients today so that all I have to do is measure out the wet ingredients and I like to use this mix to make hamburger buns and having the bread mix ready makes it easier to make later on and the oils in almond flour can turn rancid so it will only keep for a week or two in a cool dry location or up to a few months in the freezer. This recipe calls for 3 cups of almond flour and 10 tablespoons of psyllium husk powder, but I prefer to use a scale to measure out the ingredients for this recipe. And since I had the time, I decided to measure out 2 batches, and I use a paint pen to label the jars so that I don't forget what's in them. I need to refill the almond flour, but I want to wash the jar before I do, and these jars are dishwasher safe, but the metal rings can discolor in the dishwasher, so I like to remove them before I wash the jars.
that's all for today. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications before you go. And I want to thank you so much for spending your time with me today and I hope to see you next time.